friends, watercolor artists. Welcome to my watercolor channel. I'm Laurel Hart. Today I want to talk about a technique that I love to play up in watercolor, and that is using direct sunlight on a subject to help bleach out detail in an area of the painting. Did you know that when people used to hang white sheets out to dry in the sun, it was not only to dry them, but to bleach them to keep them snowy white? My mother-in-law said it used to be kind of a neighborly competition to see who could get their laundry hung out the earliest to show off how bright your sheets were and how neatly they were hung on the line. It also made them smell good too. Good old sunlight is a wonderful whitening agent as it has natural bleaching properties. If you hang your white sheets on a clothesline to dry in the sun, it will enhance the brightness of the fabric. I've discovered that this rule can hold true in painting in watercolor too. Areas of a subject drenched in bright sunlight can be bleached out to pure white, leaving wonderful abstract patterns with much of the detail eaten away by the light. When the eye contemplates a scene, where does it go? To the lightest place in the scene. Light is particularly attractive and more so than black. You will see a white spot of light at night far more easily than a black spot during the day. This is because the eye contains energy sensors that are activated by light. So leaving areas of the paper white to depict sunlight on a scene can be a useful tool in directing the viewer's eye to look where you want it to. In depicting light in watercolor, we actually don't paint anything. We leave the white of the paper untouched to signify areas in direct sunlight. No other medium that I know of uses this technique of not painting the white. I think this might be why leaving the paper untouched in watercolor seems to be almost brighter than in any other medium. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but the reflection off the white paper can almost feel blinding in watercolor sometimes. The scientific thing that is happening is that the white surface of the paper reflects all of the colors of the spectrum seen as white to our eye. Black is the opposite. It's the absorption of all the colors. There's almost a spiritual idea to this giving back of all light using the untouched paper as white in watercolor. And some watercolor societies talk about it almost in religious terms, saving the paper, preserving the paper, reclaiming the paper, and they won't allow the use of white paint in their shows. I'm not that much of a purist though. So today I want to get started and I want to introduce to you my subject. Um, I'm going to be painting um, this bouquet of roses. And I had set it in my entryway on the floor and the sunlight was coming in through the window and it was making these wonderful patterns that you see here of um, the area where the light was bleaching out the detail in the flowers. And you can see what really wonderful abstract shapes that creates when that happens. And if you paint it that way, it will um, leave that area as just a, a blinding patch of sunlight in your painting. And I love that effect in watercolor. Like I was saying earlier, I don't think it's equaled in any other medium, in my opinion. And that's, that's one of the things that draws me to watercolor so much, is its ability to depict light. So I'm going to begin, and I'm going to try to save these areas of white and um, be able to keep this center of focus right there in my painting. Um, I have put on my palette a pigment that I don't always have on here. It's called, um, I think it was called um, Radiant Pink, and it's pretty much similar to Opera Pink. I think, um, I think there are quite a few different um, pinks that are, that are similar to that. But anyway, I'm going to use that particular pigment in um, painting these roses. And I'm going to get started with, um, actually this is a sable brush. Um, since I can't find my, um, my um, favorite 
low cornels anymore. I still have a stash of them, but um, I've been using sables a little bit more and I'm finding them really kind of fun to, to use. So I think what I'm going to do is actually start with the pink of the flowers. And you can see that this is really a very intense, actually I think it is called intense pink. So I'm going to just start getting that on um, and I need my glasses and particularly um, I'm going to jump over these patterns of light that are that are here in the rows. And the more I um, dilute this, of course, the softer pink I'm going to get. And down in here, there's just a little bit of um, very little detail in that rose, but your eye fills it in and you know what it is. And then down in here too, just very little of the rose is in color. going to try to see if I can get through this too without having to bring in any any artificial white. That's got some really kind of a pretty orangish glow in that one even. I'm going to pull a little bit of that in. Just a little bit more of the pink coming down in here too. And then over here, I'm going to exaggerate the color right in here too to see how red that is right in there. And right there as well. It's just really fun to play with these abstract patterns and yet your eye will fill in what they are. And there's no question that they're roses. Okay, and then I may just want to soften those um, some of the edges here just a little bit by just massaging them a little. This color is pretty soft anyway, so it won't leave too awfully hard of edges. Okay, then up in here, these are all um, um, not in the bright sunlight. But I can still pull, just blot out a little bit of the areas that are lighter in the flowers. I 
again here on that one. Well, this is a little more painstaking way of painting than I normally do, but um, it's still it's still fun. Okay. And then this has got almost, it's just not quite as bright. And then it's got a little more of the, of the um, kind of coral color too in this one. And I think in this one, there's more of that um, little bit of an orangey tint on there as well. Don't underestimate the great value of a good paper towel to help you um, depict light also. Um, and that I've never probably really said, but my favorite brand of paper towel is, um, is Viva. It's very cloth-like and it, it, uh, holds up really well and absorbs a lot. Okay, so I've got pretty much what I want on my flowers here. Um, I'll work with them a little more as I get going here with my background and stuff too. I'll try to go kind of in and out of the subject and the background. This needs to come down maybe a little more here. And roses are kind of interesting. They, they're they very organic, and yet they do have some kind of geometric feel to them. They're, they're just really fun to paint. Okay, so I think that will be the essence of the flowers here. Now let's get to the background. And here's where I'm going to go back to more more of my traditional way of painting where I kind of float in a, a first wash. But I did want to get those roses in without too much color bleeding into them. So I've got my um, um, manganese blue and then I've got um, Permanent alizarin. And then I think I see quite a bit of ochre in here, so I think I'll use ochre as my yellow. And I will just start. Um, 
randomly putting this in. And even coming into the into the leaves, I don't really want necessarily a break there where there's going to be green. Okay, um, so down in here, I'm going to wet this area that is, um, first of all, I want to get some green on these leaves. This is gold green, but I'm going to just let that bleed. Um, right back into the background there. Try to get a little bit on here too. And I'm not um, worried about this blossom stuff happening out there. I think that'll give just some nice texture. Um, so like I was starting to say, I'm going to wet this area in here. So that when I when I come on to um, this part and paint this shadow area, it's going to bleed onto that. And it's too wet right now, so I'll come back in a minute. Okay, let's see if that um, area is dry enough to come in with. Um, and so where this is wet, still damp just a little bit, it should. 
it should bleed just a little bit through there. And I love leaving a lot of color in the shadows. Um, Even even going into there with yellow so that I don't know, it just it just unifies the rest of the color in the painting. And I want to be sure and catch this bead at the bottom so I don't get a big blossom going up into there. It's pretty wet, so it still might do that. Okay. This seems to be the darkest area of shadow. So I'm going to come back into there with some darker, darker paint. I don't I don't know if I necessarily want a hard edge there. We'll see. And these I'm going to just blur a little bit too. Okay, so now I'm going to work a little more into the I think I'm going to switch over now to my number eight. It's my number eight, Low Cornell. I'm lucky that I bought a bunch of these years ago. And I'm going to mix up a nice green. I've got sap, uh, permanent sap green. And I think I'll do, this is a little bit of Andanthrene or Indanthrone. <laughs> green that I want to be pretty deep back in here because this is getting, this is dark in here. I 
And I've got this baby's breath. back in here too. And I'll still um, mix this in with a little bit of that um, green gold that I really love. And even brighten that a little bit with some um, cadmium yellow. Just kind of softening an edge there too. I'm going to leave a little bit of white in that leaf because I, I can see where that there is some um, some bright green there. Still a
Okay, then paint. I'm going to just paint a little bit behind in here where I can see I've got some really deep shadow areas in there. I'll leave a little bit of bright, a bright green in here. And I want to mix up a purple again. Um, this is pretty dark back in here. So these shadows here are just um, the shadows from these leaves above. And I want to keep having enough pigment in those that, that I don't have to come back in. This, I just want this to look really lacy right in through here. And then I want to pull that in to kind of the, the base here to look reflective. Uh, and if you look closely, there's, there's quite a bit of a, uh, variety of color. I see pink right in here and some yellow down in there. Maybe not that much, but um, there is some yellow in there. And some of this green is, you can kind of, I guess, see the stems under there just a little bit. And this is going to be darker in there. Give this kind of a good whack down in here so it's kind of blends together.
that's actually should be a leaf right in here. And the ribbon's got a little sliver of light on it. And I feel like this value needs to come down a little bit. Yes. Still want to get a little more of that pink in there. It just doesn't want to stay colorful. What? Well, it's supposed to be blue, but... See, I'm already going back in there where I didn't want to, but value, I don't know, sometimes is more critical than color. Well, actually, I think it is. And that just wasn't quite there. Yes, that will be better. All right, I'm going to get a bigger brush now and go back into the background. Um, this would be what colors I would call my, my second triad. And I, I think I need to take just a second and clean my palette off. I'm starting to get some colors that are not really identifiable anymore. So what I want to do is get a, a deeper background in there with just um, just a lot of a lot of a mix of colors so I'm going to use my um, alizarin crimson and now I'm going to use I think I'm going to use the indanthrine blue oh man <laughs> whoops I really got into that. 
Darn it. Okay. Anyway. I'm going to start coming into this with all these darker colors back in here. And usually I mix in some transparent oxide with this, um, with this mixture, but I don't know. And after I did all that <sighs> carefulness down here, I'm going back in. Remember how I've taught you all not to do this? But I think it needs, I do think it needs a Yeah, it did need it, guys. And this... If I can just nudge this just a little bit... Oh, it's not too awfully hard-edged. But I also don't want to make... Um, whatever you call them. Blossoms. But that is a better value for that shadow there. And then I know that I've got this um, this yellow here, but I'm I'm um, hesitant to put that in. Trying to get the impression of some green back in there. Now while this is wet over here, I feel like I want to uh, 
And I think I'm going to actually come in with um, come in with some pink that's a little stronger and that's going to let those um, let these colors from the background bleed into it. So I've got soft edges over here. because these are supposed to be a little more into the background. So those are a little softer, but I don't want any pure white over here because it's going to compete too much with my center of interest over here. But see what that did, just adding that, um, that much color in over here. And to let that kind of seep into the background as useful. Now let's see where we might want some of that pulled out. Right along here is still, still pretty light. There's a guy that I like to watch who's able to pull out his lights with his brush, but I think it's hard. I can't do it. I don't want to overdo that too much. Maybe they're just going to look a little better, just all kind of bleeding together. I do like that a little better. And maybe, mm, I'll come back with a little bit of, um, I think we need some stronger pink in over here. Again, just a touch of that bright orange in there really helps that color seeing that's in the, I don't know, down in the centers of that rose. So 
so pretty. Okay. It's kind of a vermilion color. And there's that really, really exciting um, abstract pattern. And just where the, you can just see where that sun really just ate the detail right out of those flowers. And I don't think we have quite that much wide in there. All right, let's put in some of these very, very darks in the foliage. Um, Okay. And it's kind of easy to overdo this, so I want to be a little careful on it. Okay, another thing that I'm going to need to do, because that um, because this baby's breath over on this side, baby's breath, where there's this little tiny flower in there, is not in direct sunlight. I've got to come over that with the wash to just tone it down a little bit.
Okay, I am getting close here, but um, I do think my um, background up here is too light. Um, so, what I'm going to do is wet that down. And come on to the roses just a little bit so that they kind of get this color bled onto them. And I want to be really careful that I don't get too muddy out here. But do you see how that left a fuzzy edge around the roses? Which is nice when you're trying to push something into the background. Okay, let's see if I can go ahead and put the very slight wash over my baby's breath. Just kind of a light little bit of a grayish thing. Very pastel, but it needs to be not, you know, so it's not right in that bright sunlight or it's too competitive with the center of interest over there. I think that should have been a bit bluer. So it's not looking like it's um, leaves. I don't know. that helped anyway. Okay, and this is bugging me a little bit in here too. I think that needs to be a little more solid of a leaf there. And it looks like um, I maybe need just a little bit more shadow to set these leaves off back in here. Yeah, I think that helps a little. I'm kind of tempted to put some of this in up there just to make some um, interest, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, I think I've done what I set out to do, and that was to create that really lovely abstract pattern in the white there. And um, so I'm so I'm happy with it. Um, 
could it could maybe help to do that, but I just don't think I'm going to do it right now. Um, and as I'm looking at it, I think um, I think I may put just a little more description into the roses over here. I should have that little bit of a darker center, I think. I don't want to describe him too much, but I don't want to get too fussy. Um, yeah, I feel like I could have had still a little more contrast over here. Should we go for it? I think we better. Yeah, I needed it, guys. I think I really did. That is going to set it off better. Okay, on we go. Somebody better stop me. All right, I think that's it for today, everyone. Um, maybe a few touch-ups that I will do, but um, that's that's pretty much it. And I think the I think the lesson is pretty well described in this little piece. The um, that beautiful abstract light in there is is really 
you know, mimicking that bright sunlight and just nothing um, really seems to compare with the way that watercolor can depict light in my mind. Um, this has been a fun demo. Thanks for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.